thank you all for joining us tonight, especially the new people that have been invited. So I hope you enjoy being with us tonight and that you might want to come back again. Thank you for coming. Okay, this tonight is evening number 15 of our Secrets of Prophecy, Secrets of the Future Masterclass series. And I'd just like to recap some of the last few presentations as they have been leading up to tonight's topic. Last week, I presented the topic of the Antichrist, going through 10 identifying characteristics, pointing out this Antichrist, which is also known as the little horn of the book of Daniel. As the saying goes, all roads lead to Rome. And this is especially true in this case, as we identified the Roman Catholic Church system run from Vatican City under the headship of the Pope as the Antichrist. We noted we were talking about the system, not individuals who might be members of this particular church. On Monday night, Fernando talked about how Jesus and the Apostle Paul both kept the Sabbath, that even some languages use the same word for our Saturday interchangeably with their word for Sabbath. We also learnt the Ten Commandments are important for Christians living in these end times. Then on Wednesday, Melissa talked about the pagan origins of Sunday to do with worshipping pagan gods and how keeping of Sunday crept into the church, particularly with Roman Emperor Constantine in 321 AD. We also looked at all the references to the first day of the week in the Bible. There were only nine, and none of them mentioned anything about changing or removing the Sabbath of the Lord. Tonight we find out what the mark of the beast is. The mark of the beast is one of the most intriguing and important subjects in the scriptures. This prophecy involves a beast, an image to the beast, the mysterious number 666, and the deadly mark of the beast. The Bible uses quite frightening and shocking language to describe the consequences of worshipping the beast or receiving his mark. Any person who gets involved with this mark will be lost for eternity. This is why God wants to clearly warn us, because he loves us so much and does not want us to be lost. Just the same as you would warn your neighbour, their house is on fire. Tragically, the overwhelming majority of people will receive the mark of the beast. This is a subject that cannot be overlooked. If we cannot identify the beast or his mark, we could end up with the mark and not even be aware that we have it. So let's have a quick word of prayer as we delve into this subject. Let's be our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can gather together again. Please be with us. May your Holy Spirit guide us and may we find the truth and accept the truth as it is in you. Thank you for your word and please help us to understand it. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. So, what is the mark of the beast? Notice some interesting opinions that can be found on various websites. An invisible laser tattoo seen through an electronic eye. A microchip under the skin or in the bone of the head or hand. A new currency taking over from the European dollar. The universal products code barcode tattooed on the forehead. A communist red star tattooed on the forehead. The tattooed name of Antichrist written in Hebrew, since the Antichrist must be Jewish. Your credit card number tattooed on your forehead. A number branded or burnt onto you like a branding a cow. With so many interpretations to choose from, how can we know the truth? What is the number 666? And how can we avoid any connection with it? Does anyone have the mark of the beast today? 
If so, are they doomed? Does God have his own mark? And if so, who receives it? Tonight, we will identify the mark of the beast and reveal how we can absolutely be certain to avoid it. What did the prophet Daniel see happening on planet Earth at the end of time? Daniel 12, verse 1. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Prior to the second coming of Jesus, the earth will be a scene of catastrophe and conflict. The world governments will enforce the mark of the beast and issue a death decree against God's genuine followers, as found in Revelation 13. As God sees the attacks against his church, he pours out seven deadly plagues resulting in the battle of Armageddon, as found in Revelation 16. Who are the conquerors of this time of trouble and what is their reward? Revelation 15 verse two. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire and those who have had the victory over the beast, over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Revelation 7, 2 and 3. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Do not harm the earth, the sea or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. The survivors of the final conflict will be those who avoid the mark of the beast and receive the seal of God. The reward is entry to God's kingdom and the issue is worship and obedience. Every person on planet earth will soon receive a mark. Those who worship and obey the beast will receive the mark of the beast. Those who worship and obey the creator God will receive the mark or seal of God. Note the word, word seal, sign and mark can be used interchangeably. See Genesis, Romans, Revelation, and Ezekiel. Both marks are placed at the same time and both marks are symbolic. They represent authority and allegiance, approval and ownership. The good news is that if you receive the mark of God, you automatically avoid receiving the mark of the beast. Because the marks are opposites, by defining the mark of God, we simply need to look for the opposite of that mark to identify the mark of the beast. The mark of God. Where is the mark of God placed? Revelation 7, 3. Till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. The mark of God is placed on the forehead. Other trans translations say in the forehead. The forehead is where the frontal lobe of the brain is, the area of the mind where decisions are made. Anyone who receives the mark of God has made an immovable decision for God. What does God write on the foreheads of those who receive his mark? Revelation 22, four says, they shall see his face and his name shall be on their foreheads. Revelation 14.1, having his father's name written on their foreheads. Ancient seals were used, often by kings, to signify authority and approval. Even today, a personal signature of your name gives authority to a check or legal document. Here we find God writing his name on the saved as his personal authority and guarantee of protection and everlasting life. This is not a literal mark for everyone to see. It is a mark known only to God and the angels. The name of God represents his character. When God told Moses what the name of the Lord symbolized, he shared some of the most beautiful aspects of his loving character. Merciful, gracious, long-suffering, and abounding in goodness and truth, Exodus 34, 5 and 6. Those who receive the seal of God will have the gracious character of Jesus 
deeply planted in their minds. What key aspects of worship are involved in the mark of God? Deuteronomy 11 verses 1 and 18. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his judgments and commandments always. Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and your soul and bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. A relationship where you love God and keep his commandments is the greatest sign of worship and allegiance. These are the words or concepts that God wants his people to live out in their actions and always keep in the front of their minds. God has promised, I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts and I'll be their God and they shall be my people. Hebrews 8.10 this is the experience of all those who receive the mark of God. They will accept the promise and power of God and have God's commandments written in their hearts and minds. Who does God ask us to worship instead of the beast? Revelation 14, 6 to 12. And worship him who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and springs of water. In Revelation 16, 14, rather, 6 to 12, there are three key messages that go to the world just before Jesus returns. The first message calls for true worship. The final message wards against false worship. This is the definitive choice. Either worship the creator and receive the mark of God or worship the beast and receive the mark of the beast. The call to worship the creator is quoted from which commandment? The Sabbath, see Exodus 20 verse 11. An integral aspect of true worship is to keep the Sabbath in honor of God's creative power. Which aspects of God's law is a special sign of God's authority? Ezekiel 20 verse 12 and 20, hello my Sabbaths, and they will be a sign between me and you that you may know that I am the Lord your God. The Sabbath is a sign or seal that signifies the authority of God. Those who keep it can know that God is in charge of their life. The Sabbath represents God's power to create the world and empower your life. Anyone who keeps the Sabbath is demonstrating allegiance to the Creator God and accepting His complete authority. Why is the Sabbath called the seal of God? Exodus 20, verse 11. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. The seal of God represents His authority as our Creator and redeemer and is found in the heart of his law isaiah 8 verse 16. an official government seal consists of three elements a name a title and a territory an example would be james the second king of england the inscription around the edges in is an abbreviation for lacobus secundus etc there so he's, it's got his name, his territory, and his title. So his name, James II. Territory, Great Britain, France, and Ireland. And title, King Defender of the Faith. The reason why the Sabbath is called the seal of God is because this commandment has all three elements of God's seal within it as we read in Exodus 20, verse 11. Yep. God's seal. The inscription around the edges is taken from the Sabbath commandment. Name, the Lord, for in six days the Lord. Title, the creator, the Lord made. Territory, the universe, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that in them is. Who did the prophet Ezekiel see 
receiving the mark of God. Ezekiel 9 verse 4. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within it. The people of Israel had slumped into deep apostasy and false worship. They were even involved in sun worship, Ezekiel 8 verse 16. God decided to destroy those involved in false worship, but he protected his genuine followers. The people who received the mark of God were those who loved him, obeyed him, and were deeply upset about the false sun worship within the church. In the last days, God's genuine followers will refuse to participate in false worship. This group receives the mark of God for protection from the judgment of the plagues. Summary statement, mark of God. The seal of God is a symbolic mark that signifies God's genuine followers. This mark will be placed on those who love Jesus supremely and keep all God's commandments, including the Sabbath. They refuse to accept or participate in false worship. They would rather die than dishonor God. Who is the beast that has come that has his own mark of authority? The mark of the beast. Revelation 13 verse 12. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. The most important factor in determining the mark of the beast is to firstly identify the beast. Once that is clear, then the mark of that specific beast can be determined. Although it is the second beast of Revelation 13 that enforces the mark of the beast, as in Revelation 13 verse 16, it is doing so on behalf of the first beast, which is in verses 12 to 15. It is this first beast, the papacy, which receives global worship and has its own special mark of authority. This is a mark of allegiance and loyalty that will be enforced on all people. That's to be shown more in the final superpower power coming up. What is the number of the beast? Revelation 13 verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. The number of the beast is 666. The number six played a key role in the life and religion of the ancient pagan cultures. The Babylonians divided many of their weights, times and measures by six. It was the Babylonians who recognized 360 degrees, 60 times six in a circle, 60 minutes in the hour and 60 seconds in the minute. The number six also held mysterious significance among the sun worshiping priests in their religion. Ancient religions, religious sun seals called Sigilla Solus have been discovered. They show a table of 36 numbers, all adding up to the number 666. The symbol of Babylon in the book of Revelation represents a corrupt Christian church as in Revelation 16, uh, 17, sorry, 1 to 6. The Bible highlights the number 666 as a num another symbol to demonstrate the link between false religion and worship of the ancients with the false religion and worship of the last days. The number 666 is not the mark of the beast. It is the number of a man and can be counted, Revelation 13 to help identify who the beast is. Some Bible scholars have calculated the universal title of the Pope, Vicarius Philae Dei, meaning Vicar of the Son of God, through Roman numerals, and found that the number totals to 666. 
where is the mark of the beast placed? Revelation 13, 16. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or in their foreheads. The symbol of the hand represents work or action, shown in Ecclesiastes 9, verse 10. The forehead represents the mind where decisions are made. Here we find people who will demonstrate allegiance to the beast either in thought or action. The mark of the beast is a symbolic a symbol of allegiance to the false religion of the last days. What does the beast claim as a special mark of authority? According to the papacy, the greatest mark of her authority has been the change of the Sabbath day. Just as the Sabbath is a sign that represents the authority of God, Sunday is a sign that represents the authority of the church. There are many statements by the church to demonstrate this issue. Notice these comments. The church has always had a strong sense of its own authority. Perhaps the boldest thing, most revolutionary change the church ever did, the holy day, the Sabbath, was changed from Saturday to Sunday. The day of the Lord, Deus Domini, was chosen not from any directions noted in scripture, but from the church's sense of its own power. St. Catherine Catholic Church, Sentinel, Volume 50, number 22, 1995. Of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change from Sabbath to Sunday was her act, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. Reply to a letter, October 28, 1894, from Cardinal Gibbons. From Sabbath to Sunday was her act, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power. Oh, that's the same thing. Okay. Okay. The church claims the change of the Sabbath is a mark of her authority because virtually every Christian keeps Sunday or Christian church keeps Sunday. The only basis for keeping Sunday is the authority of the Catholic church. There is no, no authority from scriptures to keep Sunday. What does the papacy think it has the power to do? Daniel 7 verse 25, and shall intend to change times and law. Changing God's time. The papacy has attempted to change God's time in two ways. The time the Sabbath was changed from Saturday to Sunday, and the timing of the worship day was changed from the biblical sunset to sunset, as in Leviticus 23.32, to the pagan custom of midnight to midnight. Changing God's law. The catechisms of the papacy have revealed the intent to change God's law in three ways. It has removed the second commandment, which forbids worship of images and idols. Um, can, can you guys put your mics on mute, please? There's noise coming through. It has reduced the Sabbath commandment to over 90 words to just eight. And it has divided the 10th commandment into two commandments. It is this change to the times and law of God that has left the mark, the mark of the beast. Do people who currently observe Sunday as a holy day have the mark of the beast? Revelation 13, 17. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Um. Uh. 
Okay, I think they've muted now. There are many Christians who currently keep Sunday who love God and will receive eternal life. They do not have the mark of the beast. The enforcement of the mark of the beast is still in the future. I don't think it's going to be very long, but it's still in the future at the moment. At that time, the governments of the world will issue a law to enforce Sunday keeping. They will selectively stop buying and selling, attempting to starve God's people into submission. It is possible that modern technology such as microchips will be used in the process. However, the microchip itself is not the mark of the beast. There is not one text that says the mark of the beast is specifically related to technology. The mark of the beast is solely related to worship. The mark of the beast will be placed on anyone who worships and obeys the false religions of this world. This tragic scenario depicts many receivers of the mark sincerely thinking they are doing the right thing. This mark is not just placed on overt devil worshippers. The key point about the mark of the beast is that people will be deceived into false worship. Revelation 19 verse 20. Each of us will need to choose to obey God at a time when the vast majority of the world is obeying man, yet convinced they are obeying God. What are the characteristics of those who avoid the mark of the beast? Revelation 14, 9 to 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Immediately after the most solemn warning message in the Bible, God outlines the characteristics of those who accept his warning and avoid this dreaded mark. If you want to avoid the mark of the beast, you need to keep God's commandments, including the Sabbath. This comes with having a living faith relationship with Jesus. In fact, anyone who has this experience will never receive the mark of the beast. What relationship does Jesus have with those who receive, receive the seal of God? Revelation 14, 4. These are the ones who follow the lamb wherever he goes. What a beautiful picture of a love relationship. Here are people in heaven who follow Jesus everywhere, learning more about him and spending as much time as possible with him. In order to follow Jesus in heaven, we must first follow him here on earth. Jesus had a loving relationship with his father on earth and kept all of his commandments. Jesus wants us to follow him by living our life each day like he lived his. Summary for the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is a symbolic mark that is placed on those who worship and obey the false religions of the world. It will be placed on the hand or forehead, indicating allegiance to the beast in mind or actions. The mark will be placed on those who, involve, who are involved in false worship. These people obey man's laws, but are disobeying God's laws. Three points to remember. At the end of time, every person on earth will receive a mark. If you receive the mark of God, you automatically avoid the mark of the beast. The mark of God is placed on those who love Jesus with all their heart and are obedient to all of his commandments, including the Sabbath. During an evangelistic program, the speaker was challenged after one of his meetings. The subject was the Sabbath. A tall, well-dressed man approached the speaker and told him that he was a devoted Christian. He had met the Pope and knew many church theologians. He then went on to say, everything you said tonight about the Sabbath is true. 
The Sabbath is Saturday. The Sabbath was changed to Sunday, worshipped by the church. But I have one problem. Only one said the evangelist, yes, my problem is that you judge truth by the Bible and the Bible alone, said the man. The speaker took this as a compliment. However, he could see the man was earnest. So he said to him, on what basis do you determine truth? The man then said, I judge the truth by the Bible, tradition and the words of the Pope. If there is a difference between the church and the Bible, then I will listen to the Pope since he has the most recent revelation from God. The man left the meeting and did not return to any future programs. So what would you have said to this man? What dangers are inherent to this man's views? And the last thing, the mark of the beast is coming. Would you like to prepare for the seal of God by keeping all of God's commandments, including the Sabbath, as a sign that you will follow Jesus wherever he leads? And I hope you'd all answer yes for that. All right, let's have a word of prayer as we close. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we could study a word tonight again on this important topic. And please prepare us for what's coming ahead and prepare our hearts and help us to take action to be on your side when those decisions are made and before those decisions are made so we can be ready. Thank you for your blessings and be with us until we meet again on Monday night. In Jesus' name, amen.